Good morning from a very nice place. It's uh, one of the, well, I can say rivers, valleys of, um, of uh, the Judean mountains, heading to the um, Jordan Valley. Then it's already at the desert side, but here it is. Look how beautiful it is. Um, full with water. There are three springs here. And you can hear the water. Look at that beautiful building. It was built by the British, because most of the water from uh, for East Jerusalem until 1970, the main source of the water came from that area. Listen to the sound of it. Although it's a desert area, uh, it was a great uh, rainy season and um, if there's water, lots of plants, lots of animals. Now, let me show you what there. And Pratt. And this is part of the British systems for the water supply. Mint. They used to pump it from here. What I'm doing here, with whom? Those are tour guides. Uh, we still, oh, how should I say that, in a horrible uh, um, area. Uh, then the tourists are not here. Then what left for us to do is to enjoy life and to study. And this is Vivian. Hey, <laughs> that was Vivian. Did it egg? Did it again? I want to take a picture of you. <laughs> Great. <laughs> now you can, you can speak in English, Vivian. Yeah, yeah, no. Beautiful. What a lovely day. We earned it there already. It is, it is, it is. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna visit uh, at least few of the monasteries. Some of them are functioning, some of them are not. But look how beautiful it is. Sadly, their national reserve is closed due to the war. Oh, look at yeah, lots of caves. Uh, that national reserve is closed because uh, of the war. And they open it just for us. If you would like to climb rocks, this is one of the best places to do that in Israel. If it's okay by you, I won't do that today. I wonder that in my lifetime. But you can see a beautiful monastery here that we are heading to it. Sadly, we won't be able to enter because uh, uh, the idea of the monastery is to be alone. I mean, not to be with us. Then uh, I accept it. I accept it. We're still heading to one of the three uh, springs. We are going to Enprat and Mabua and Enkelt. Okay, we're going to do that next time. It's um, uh, the, the road is closed now because of the war that we cannot do a lot. You can see here an aqueduct. They're not only us use that water. Uh, and a wick mill that used the power of uh, um, the power of the water. This is from the Ottoman time. Sorry. No. Sound of the water. Well, 
what the monastery is doing here. Beside the story of it, that you will understand it soon, the idea of a monastery is to isolate the monks who want to be as close as they can to God, but they don't want to be with others, then one of the best places to do that is go to the desert. Elijah did it. Um, John the Baptist did it. Then why not we? Then if you wanted to connect yourself to God, and let's face it, you can connect yourself to God here as well. But you want to be very close to Jerusalem, then this is the best option. And Hariton, who was the first monk, I think at the 4th or 5th, uh, late 4th, beginning of 5th century, came to here. He was looking for a place that he could be with God. And we're going to talk about it soon, but first, I don't want to lose the group. Oh, gosh, it's so beautiful. It's a very easy walking, as you can understand. Uh, monastery is above us. The name of the place is Enfara, that's in Arabic. And uh, what is the source of that name? The book of Genesis, Rachel is pregnant. They are going to Bethlehem Ephrat with Jacob. She is having a baby, but she She died there in Ephrata. We know the we know the tomb next to Bethlehem, uh, it's still in Israel, and it actually uh, connect to the the sentence of Ephrata Bethlehem. Hundreds of years, people actually went to pray there. Not here. But if you're taking the Bible and you are looking for the tomb of, of uh, Rachel in other places in the Bible, you can see, you can get a different kind of picture. The book of Samuel, uh, when, Saul, when Saul went to look for the donkeys, he met Samuel and, and then he said that, it's that Rachel is actually buried at the border of Benjamin, Benjamin uh, 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 tribe. The tomb of Rachel is in the heart of uh, the tribe of Judea. Then what's happening here? In Jeremiah. Oh, this is the. Uh, and Jeremiah had said that that uh, Rachel is crying at Rama. Rama, it's a village that are right there, not so far away. Today, it's in the name of Aram. Then, then if she cried of over a child, it's supposed to be very close to here. In the book of Ezra, when the Jews came back from Babylon, they mentioned they came from Bethlehem, Benjamin, not Bethlehem, Judea. And listen, there is another Bethlehem somewhere here in the tribe of Benjamin that we are in it. Prat. A front, 
Frata, which is the name of uh, the place that she died in. Uh, and when you're looking at uh, the tribe of uh, Benjamin, this is the Bible, there's another place it's called El Para. Efrat, Parat, maybe it's here. If you will climb up, there is a place that Arabs call it, uh, in English, the, the tombs of the Jews of, the, of Israel. Then maybe that is where Rachel is buried, Efrat. Then maybe it's actually Prat, Para. This is the, uh, the name of the river, and because of because of the story of Rachel. And is Rachel buried here here in the Frat of Benjamin? Maybe. Jeremiah 13. Uh, well, first of all, Jeremiah lived not so, not so far away from here in Anata, Anatot. Then God told him to go to. Prat, which is here, so many, uh, so many times people thought that he actually Jeremiah went to Iraq, Mesopotamia, but now we know that it's actually here. He lived here. This is Prat, uh, but not Babylon. Prat, Benjamin. Then Prat, Ephrata, Jeremiah, um, Rachel. I mean, it's, oh yes, for so many people. It really sounds obvious. Josephus actually mentioned that Shimon Bagheera, one of the leaders of the revolt against the Romans, went to the place with no by the name Parta, which is here, and hide his treasures in the caves. And there's so many like that, so many like that uh, in that area. Beautiful, isn't it? The history, history comes alive, even in the time of war. Monks in Judaism, there's few, three rules. No wine. Second thing is, haircut. Don't do that. The third thing is, um, the purity of the dead, the impurity of the dead. You cannot be next to dead people. Samson uh, was one of the monks, but relationship he had a lot let's start to talk about the beginning of christianity and uh, the monk uh, monastery or mon uh, monks at uh, christianity it started at the third um third uh, century in egypt antonius the big antonius san antonius at the eastern uh, desert of Egypt. That he is to be an hermit with himself only, but you know, people want to, to be as close as they can to holy people, then people joined him to his uh, kind of area, let's call it monastery. They wanted to be far away from the Romans, you know, and, and um, until the 4th century, Christianity wasn't um, a legal religion at the time. Slowly, slowly, they found that more centers in Syria and Cappadocia, in Sinai, and in Israel, in the land of Israel. In Israel, the Christians had no um, relationship, no money, real estate, nothing like that, to be as poverty as they can, poor as they can. It started um, the monasteries or the monks came to Israel from Egypt, let's say at 4th century. Haritun is the one who founded the um, Christian monasteries in Israel. He came to Jerusalem 
and the and he left to the Judean Desert. We are here at the Judean Desert to that area. More monks came to him for the same reason to be next to the holy uh, holy um, holy people, and they were called hermits. Um, more hermits came to him and they started to have kind of a community together, a community of hermits. And he used to, he used to uh, use the um, caves all around, this kind of a one path who they used and at the weekend they came to the big or to the center and it's called Laura and this is the first Laura and it was founded by Hariton it's around 330 AD How do we know everything about it? One of the monks, we don't know his name, wrote everything about what's happened here in the Judean Desert. Uh, he talked about Shalitun, who came to here, and uh, some uh, uh, people tried to rob him. They catch him, they tied his hands, they threw him into one of the caves. And they actually went to celebrate another victory, another victory of, of Rob. And suddenly, he saw something weird. He saw a snake goes next to him and uh, and he came to the wine glasses of the robbers drop some poison into those glasses and when they came back they celebrate and drank the wine and you know what's happened to them and then Hariton found himself with the bodies of the robbers and their money lots of money He escaped from the cave and he said, this is a miracle, very big miracle. And with that money, I will give, I mean, I will give all the money to people who need it. And then I'm going to be a monk, will continue to be a monk. Remember the dimension 330? This is already excellent. It's the Nicaea Council. It's already after uh, Christianity became to be a legal, a legal uh, um, uh, religion. Then he wasn't uh, um, he wasn't afraid from the Romans anymore. But the idea is, um, but the idea is to be far from. The people to be connect to connect himself to God himself and too many people came to visit him or to be with him he decided to leave his monastery he went to Jericho which is there and above it uh, oh I don't know if you can see that let me see see that oh, it was there yeah, I think you can see it. Then Haritun, we're going back to Haritun, he built um, a monastery uh, next to the um, place that King Herod and before that the Hachman built their fortress. But people came 
to there too and it came the second Laura and that's called the Laura of Doka. Dok it's the name of the uh, Hashmonite fortress and if you came with me to, uh, to Bethlehem I'm almost talking about uh, that place. Now we know that that uh, that monastery is Karantal or the Temptation Mount that's where the, the devil tried Jesus and I do have some videos of it and by that if you're talking about that is that your first video of mine? Yes? Then don't forget to subscribe my uh, channel uh, because I do have more than 20,000 videos on the Holy, about the Holy Land. Everything about Christianity, Judaism, a lot about Islam. Be my guest. Be my family member. The third, uh, the third monastery that we built, the third Laura, remember a community of monks who share everything and eat at the weekend but the, the rest of the week they are staying in the small caves like that cave and like that cave and that's he built it next to Herodion the place that King Herod built his own tomb and at the end he came back to here and he was buried there in one of the caves sadly they won't the let us go in. In the 4th century, there were something like 50 uh, monasteries with thousands of, uh, of monks. Uh, at the time of the Muslims, uh, he didn't, uh, didn't destroy, but didn't help the Christians here. Then people all left that area. At the 19th and 20th century, um, the pilgrims, the monks, came back because uh, that place, although it was owned by the Muslims, the Christian countries started to buy some places here and it was a statement. Be uh, okay for our Christians. Accept Christianity. The night is you could enter to here without any problem because no one was here. Then at 1993 four, uh, in the Oslo Agreement and the fall of the UUUSSR. Some of the Russian monks came to here yeah, Israel wanted to be uh, to be nice for the uh, for the for the uh, communist uh, Russia, and Jordan actually gave the other uh, the other um, uh, Christian the non uh, the non uh, Soviet one. Then in that case. Here, when we came here, we gave it to the to the Russian, to the communist Russian. Today, it's not so important. Red, white, today it's Russia, and it belongs to Russia uh, until today. And they renovated, built it, and suddenly we cannot go in because of it. That wall that you see here, we didn't talk about it. This is not less than an aqueduct. Took the water from here to Jericho for uh, gates and for a first one, which was something that we don't know exactly what it is, but it used to be the um, kind of the best perfume ever. And Cleopatra, for example, took the uh, a first one uh, filled from the hands of King Herod and used it by herself. Then, then it, in that case, it started as uh, from the time of the Hashmonite and then King Herod, and the rest is it as well. So it goes all the way until Jericho, which is down the valley. The buildings here is from the Ottomans time. The eucalyptus tree is from the 
Mandat, British time. All right, we are going back to the bus and then um, let's say goodbye. I think you remember Itai if you watch my, one of my videos of uh, uh, the view from uh, the Sam Samaria then. See? Hey everybody, how are yeah. you? <laughs> yeah. Then see you in my next video. Bye-bye. <laughs>